Hello and welcome to the Thumb Through Education Research Made Approachable. Today we're looking at an article titled Save Your Strokes, Chinese Handwriting Practice Makes for Ineffective Use of Instructional Time in Second Language Classrooms. This comes from three researchers at Brandeis University and Worcester Polytechnic Institute. Um, I can't pronounce most of these names and I'm not going to try, but if you're watching this on YouTube, they'll be on the screen. And if you're listening to the, on the podcast app, they will be in the description to save you and to save me the suffering of pronunciation. Anyways, it seems that one third of course time in Chinese foreign language courses is spent on handwriting practice based on the data going into this study. And the researchers themselves are hypothesizing that handwriting practice has no impact on the primary goals of word acquisition and communication. So there's a little bit of disparity there. This study examines word acquisition and recognition with and without handwriting practice. Many CFL, Chinese foreign language, teachers believe the repetition involved helps students with word recognition skills. Previous research, however, has isolated handwriting practice as the most time-consuming activity for Chinese foreign language learners, and the social significance of being able to write with Chinese characters has fallen. For Chinese children, shifting the focus to pinyin or typed practice with an emphasis on phonics proved damaging to word recognition, but the same might not be true for CFL learners. Previous research regarding CFL learners as focused on those living in China and or with significant previous experience in learning Chinese, whereas this research focuses on novice CFL learners. A pilot version of this work from earlier this year revealed that handwriting practice was an ineffective use of instruction time for CFL learners, participants scored significantly lower on online portions of word recognition post-tests after spending 30% of their practice time on character and word hand-copying exercises. These significant differences were apparent immediately following word acquisition practice sessions and on repeated testing one day and even one week later. Worse, results of on-paper post-tests did not reveal significant gains for those who had spent time focused on hand-copying. As such, pilot results lent credibility to the proposition that CFL instructors should not sacrifice novice learning time to handwriting instruction when word acquisition and communication are of primary concern. Now, this new study was essentially a replication of its pilot, and the results were similar, but I want to take a second to look at the phrase that just came out of my mouth, the phrase, when word acquisition and communication are a primary concern. They're not suggesting, the researchers here are not suggesting that that is always, those are always the primary concerns in a um, Chinese language classroom. You might even have a whole classroom dedicated to learning the art of Chinese calligraphy, right? So they're saying that circumstantially, that's a circumstantial win, not a suggestive win. Anyways, fi findings suggested a significant difference between practice with and without handwriting when considering immediate word recognition outcomes, favoring the removal of handwriting exercises with a marginally significant lasting impact three days later. Although these results were not as robust as those observed in the previous study, they trended in the same direction and reaffirmed that replacing handwriting with additional word acquisition training may lead to stronger word recognition in the short term. This gain was lost one week later, denoting a natural forgetting curve. These findings suggest that handwriting is an ineffective use of practice time for CFL learners who wish to focus primarily on word acquisition and communication. Students scored significantly lower on word recognition tasks after spending, um, in this study specifically, 34.69% of their practice time on those handwriting exercises, mimicking the structure of a traditional CFL course. This aligned with the filings excuse me, according to the report that's aligned with the findings of the pilot work in which students scored significantly lower on word recognition tasks after spending 30.38% of their practice time on handwriting exercises. This is a really interesting study dealing with a really sensitive topic because it can be easy to come across as culturally insensitive um, when you're vouching against something like calligraphy in the classroom. Have you thought about starting a podcast, but you're not sure where to begin? I recommend using Anchor. It's the easiest way to make a podcast, hands down. It's perfect for busy professionals like teachers because it gives you everything you need in one place. You have an app on your phone and you have the website pulled up on your computer. They've got creation tools you can use to record and edit right there. And they'll distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard everywhere. Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and more. And you can easily make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership through either sponsorships like this one or through direct listener support. 
So download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started today. I still write in cursive sometimes for fun. Thank you so much for listening. Let me know what you think about this in the comments below if you're on YouTube and maybe even in a review if you're on the podcast app. Have a wonderful day. Thank you for listening and never stop learning.